you've probably heard the cliche, there's no I in team. Does that mean you can't be concerned about your individual needs if you want to be a good teammate? Of course not. It just means that you should try to prioritize the needs and goals of the team over your own individual needs and goals. When you're working on a team, it's easy to feel as though your preferences must take a back seat. The reality is, there will likely be times when your personal needs don't align well with the needs of the team. This can be about small details, like when or where the team meets, or bigger issues, like the approach your team takes on a project. When you make sacrifices and put your teammates before yourself, you build trust within your team. People are often willing to accommodate you, especially if you've accommodated them in the past. There may be times when you'll individually benefit from the team's work. To foster trust and open communication, it's a good idea to disclose that up front. Building trust within your team takes time and consistent effort. Remember to put your team's needs before your own. By prioritizing what's in the best interest of the team, you not only set a good example for the rest of your teammates, you also signal your commitment to the greater good rather than personal gain. This trust-building behavior will make your team function optimally and in the end will make you stand out as an ideal teammate. If you had to choose between a performer who was absolutely stellar but inconsistent or a performer who was strong, consistent, and reliable, which would you choose? When it comes to teamwork, there's no question. Reliability is crucial. Knowing you can rely on a teammate is critical for establishing and maintaining trust within a team. The progress of a team's effort can easily get derailed when one person doesn't do their part. To demonstrate you're a reliable teammate, you should keep your commitments, deliver results, and consistently communicate key status updates. Let's start with keeping your commitments. Your word is your bond. Whenever you can, make sure you're consistently doing the things you say you'll do even when you don't think people are paying attention. You'd be surprised what people notice but don't comment about. If you make promises that you don't keep, you'll quickly get the reputation for being a teammate that can't be relied on. So, if you agree to a standing weekly meeting at 7 a.m., make sure you're ready to go at 7 on those mornings. Speaking of promises, make sure you can deliver results on the portion of the team's work you're responsible for. I like to advise people to under-promise and over-deliver. What I mean by this is, set a realistic goal and make sure you can deliver on that. Then, if you can do more, your teammates will be delighted. On the other hand, if you initially commit to a lofty goal and fall short, you'll disappoint the team. Of course, life happens. You can't be expected to attend 100% of the functions, meetings, or engagements that you may be committed to, which is why it's important to communicate key status updates. If something comes up, you're sick, you've hit a roadblock, whatever might keep you from honoring a commitment or delivering the expected results, let your teammates know as soon as possible. The more advanced notice you can give, the better. This allows time for everyone to adjust their expectations or the workload when necessary. When you don't communicate, people often assume the worst. Even if you're regularly a strong performer, they remember the times when you've let the team down, which is why it's critical to keep your team informed if or when you think you can't keep your commitments or deliver the expected outcome. Now, People are much more forgiving if you don't communicate positive news. In fact, they often don't mind at all. For example, if you're 20% under the expected budget, that's news you can and should share, but most likely won't upset anyone if you don't mention it right away. On the other hand, if you know you're going to be 20% over the projected budget, this is information you want to loop everyone into as soon as you can. You may be tempted to keep bad news to yourself with the hope that you can resolve the issue before anyone notices it was even a problem. High-performing teams need reliable and consistent performers. You'll build your reputation as an effective teammate if you remember to keep your commitments, deliver results, and keep your teammates in the loop when things change by communicating key status updates. 
I saw a meme not too long ago that read, a bad attitude is like a flat tire. You can't get very far until you change it. This is true both for your personal and your team-related efforts. When it comes to your teammates and your team's work, it's important to keep a positive outlook. To demonstrate you're a positive teammate, you can highlight the strengths of your teammates, refrain from gossiping, and avoid speaking negatively about the team's projects. Let's start with the first area, highlighting the strengths of your teammates as they make contributions toward accomplishing your team's goals. When you note the efforts and point out their strengths, you make your teammates feel appreciated. So give credit where credit is due. You can do this when you talk about them to others, and you can also compliment them directly. Who doesn't like to be praised? By saying nice things about your teammates, you set a positive tone for your team as a whole. When you don't have something positive to say about a teammate, it's best to remain quiet. As tempting as it might be, try to refrain from gossip about your teammates. This includes listening to, discussing, or spreading details you've heard but have not verified are true. One issue with office gossip is that it can spread so easily. It may start off as something small, maybe even well-intentioned. Say you shared something with one person. The problem is that one person will likely tell at least one other person, and so on. Before you know it, that one statement has grown to the point where it's uncontrollable, and lots of people have heard a version of what you originally shared. I say aversion because information is almost never shared exactly as it was heard. This is problematic because it spreads false information, depletes trust, and negatively impacts the team's dynamic. In addition to being positive towards your teammates and avoiding gossip, it's also important to keep a positive outlook about the work you're engaged in. There's tons of literature out there about the power of positive psychology. It, along with a negative attitude, can be contagious. The good news is, you can practice this. For starters, avoid complaining. Whether or not you like the project your team is working on doesn't change the fact that you need to work together to complete it. It's much easier to work with someone who's making the choice to be positive about the work. Another thing you can do is train yourself to look for the positive in every situation. We see what we're looking for. To be a good teammate, choose positivity. It's much more likely your outlook on the work will be positive if you're looking for the good in it. Negative attitudes bring down the team's performance and morale. Positivity can be equally contagious and improve outcomes for the team. Remember, a strong teammate is supportive and has a positive attitude towards teammates and the team's work overall. It seems really obvious that in building healthy working relationships, we should be respectful. Unfortunately, that's often not the case. A good teammate is polite and respectful to his or her colleagues, respectful of their time, boundaries, and their ideas. Let's start with being respectful of time. Today's work culture is so busy. Often, it seems that time is our most valuable commodity. This is why people quickly get frustrated when they feel as though their time is being wasted. Keep your working relationships on solid footing by showing you respect boundaries for your teammates, recognizing that each person will likely have different ones. What do I mean by boundaries? Well, quite literally, a boundary is a line that shouldn't be crossed. If a teammate shares a boundary with you, be respectful of it. By violating that line, you send a clear message of disrespect to the person who shared it with you, which can completely erode trust. You aren't going to agree with your teammates on everything, whether it's personal, like politics or religion, or on a strategic approach you take with a client. It's unlikely everyone on your team will see things the same way. And that's okay. In fact, Some healthy disagreement on a topic can often force teams to consider multiple perspectives and develop a stronger outcome. It's important, however, to make sure you're respectful of ideas, whether or not you agree with them. Try not to belittle or diminish viewpoints you disagree with. You can argue, just don't alienate your teammates in the process. Remember, to separate the person from their ideas, you can have positive relationships with people you disagree with, 
if you're willing to prevent allowing a difference of opinion to get in the way of an otherwise healthy working relationship. You should expect conflict on your teams. It's perfectly fine to disagree with your teammates. You just don't want to be disagreeable. Instead, effective teammates are polite and respectful of their teammates, particularly of their time, boundaries, and ideas. By being respectful of your teammates, they'll remember how you made them feel for all the right reasons. Given the pace of business today, if your team is usually focused on responding to everything that comes your way, you'll quickly get bogged down in the work of putting out fires rather than preventing them. An ideal teammate is proactive. So, how does one model proactivity? What are the behaviors that signal this quality? A proactive teammate thinks strategically about the team's role in the organization as a whole. By taking a step back and looking at the bigger picture, you can help your team strategically consider the work you're doing and how it fits into the broader organization. This may require that you take some time to learn about the other functional areas that are impacted by your team's work. How does your team's efforts impact other people in your company? What about your customers? Knowing how your team's work fits into the big picture will help you anticipate the needs of your organization. Thinking ahead is a very important asset an effective teammate brings to the table. When you're thinking ahead, you can often anticipate potential challenges that the team can address before they become bigger problems. When you plan ahead, you lighten the workload for everyone on your team. If you've thought through the, say, five steps of your team's project, you have a perspective on the work that others won't have considered. You can suggest combining steps three and five, which won't have occurred to others on your team because they're reacting to each step in sequence. This saves time and redundancies with your team's work. Even when you're thinking about your team's work in the broader context of your organization, anticipating the needs of your stakeholders, and planning ahead, inevitably, things won't always go as you expect. And teams can quickly get derailed by setbacks and or unanticipated changes. When that happens, an ideal teammate will get the team back on track by refocusing on the goals or deliverables that matter most. It's easy to get bogged down in the details of projects, and if you're not careful, rebounding from these little excursions can add a lot of time to the overall journey. High-performing teams can't afford to always be reactive. Instead, thinking proactively about your team's objectives will make you an invaluable asset to the group. You can do this by keeping the big picture in mind, anticipating roadblocks or challenges, planning ahead, and pushing the team's agenda along when the effort stalls. Exemplary teams understand that we accomplish more together and approach teamwork with a collaborative spirit. It's easy to show you can be a good team player when things are going your way. An ideal team player is collaborative even when things don't go as he or she would like. You can demonstrate a collaborative spirit by encouraging participation, being cooperative, and supporting team decisions. Teams accomplish more when everyone participates. An ideal teammate encourages participation of others and also actively participates in team meetings and getting the work finished. You want to openly share your point of view and be open to hearing the ideas from others. In addition to sharing your ideas, it's important to be cooperative. There will be times when the team moves in a direction that you like, and then there will be times when you don't. Being cooperative means you adjust. Teamwork requires you to both give and take. Make sure you're willing to defer to the team and continue giving your best effort. Finally, support the decisions your team makes, even if you disagree. Everyone on your team isn't going to agree on everything. Imagine how stifling your project would be if some of your teammates intentionally worked against the team's agreed upon agenda. That is a recipe for a poor outcome. A great team player enthusiastically approaches the team's work, regardless of whether he or she agrees completely with the team's game plan. You demonstrate maturity, professionalism, and a collaborative spirit when you participate, cooperate, and stand by your team's decisions. In the workplace, we respect, value, and appreciate professionalism. And 
Great teammates routinely demonstrate it. What do I mean by that? Well, professionalism is tied to your personal brand or your professional reputation. It's the impression you make and how your colleagues would describe you to others. Your professionalism can be summarized based on whether or not you are competent, complete your work, and how you conduct yourself. An easy way to remember this is the three C's. Let's start with competence. What skills or experiences are you bringing to the team? Your academic and professional background are the foundation of your perceived competence. From there, your ability to complete your tasks and do the job well will adjust how your teammates see you. In addition to the quality of the work you produce, you can build your competence by investing in your own professional development. In today's quickly changing world, you need to continuously develop your skills. Make sure you're paying attention to the relevant new technology, software, and sharpening your soft skills. Investing in your own learning is likely to return dividends. You can also show off your competence by making sure you're prepared. You may not always have a chance to review materials or the agenda prior to team meetings, but the more you can, the better. Taking a little extra time to make sure you're ready to go will help you to contribute in team meetings. During these meetings, you'll want to remain actively engaged. Speak up and share your ideas and concerns. This doesn't mean you should be speaking the whole time. Just make sure you're paying attention to the discussion and making a contribution to the overall effort. Your participation and engagement in meetings shows a lot about your ability to manage the tasks on your plate. Speaking of the work you need to juggle, make sure you complete your work thoroughly and on time, if not early. This applies to deadlines and any deliverables you commit to completing. Your personal brand or your professional reputation is tied to your ability to get the job done well and on time. If you're routinely late for meetings or missing deadlines, you'll quickly build a reputation as someone the team can't rely on. Finally, when it comes to how you conduct yourself, there are a few things to keep in mind. Professional colleagues speak and dress in ways that represent the team in a positive light. Your conduct is seen as a reflection on your team. Carry yourself in ways that will make your team proud to be associated with you. When it comes to how you speak, limit your use of profanity and offensive language, even when joking. You'll also want to make sure you're dressed appropriately for the expectations in your work environment. A professional teammate looks the part. Make sure you're dressed appropriately for the occasion. Demonstrating professionalism on a regular basis will help make you an invaluable teammate. You can do this by making a habit of a few key behaviors. Just remember the three C's, competence, completion of work, and conduct. Chances are, the project your team is working on won't be your last. At the end of the day, the outcome your team delivers is important, but the process for how you go about getting these results is also critical. Exemplary teammates approach each team project with a long-term in mind. They focus on how the team gets the work done, not just the team's outcomes. For the team, this is important because it affects your ongoing work together. For you personally, it's tied to your professional reputation. How do you demonstrate that you're strategically focused on the big picture rather than bogged down on the minutia of your team's tasks? Well, you show that you can balance your work with your working relationships, learn from mistakes, and demonstrate flexibility. Let's start with the first. Balancing everything that comes your way can be a struggle at times. It's easy to get tunnel vision and focus so closely on getting work accomplished that you lose sight of the bigger picture. In our haste to deliver results, we can alienate or even neglect our teammates. Try to find a good balance between the project you're working on and your working relationships with the people on your team. Maintaining a healthy relationship is important for getting the job done because you rely on each other to complete the team's tasks. Because they recognize the interdependence of working on teams, ideal teammates try to avoid making mistakes. But despite your best intentions, things don't go the way we plan all the time. We're going to make mistakes. We can learn a lot about ourselves and each other based on how we respond to setbacks. Strong teammates learn from mistakes that you 
and your teammates make. Don't make them a bigger deal than they have to be. Address them and then move on. If you value the people more than the outcome, you'll respond to mistakes with grace. We all need a little space for when things don't go as planned. Change is inevitable and often happens unexpectedly. This is why ideal teammates anticipate change and are ready to adapt as needed. Try to demonstrate flexibility with your teammates. At the end of the day, you need to get the job done. A great teammate is willing to roll up his or her sleeves and complete the outstanding tasks, even if it isn't something you want to do. You may be able to get away with a by any means necessary approach once or twice, but it typically leads to damaged relationships that get in the way of future progress. Remember, the people on your team are critical for accomplishing your collective goals. Once you complete the project or task in front of you, there will likely be another one down the line with these or other teammates. By balancing the project work and the people on your team, learning from mistakes and demonstrating flexibility, you'll show that you're an asset to any team. Understanding yourself is fundamental to understanding others and working well within a team. Self-awareness can be tricky, so make sure you look for multiple data points to help you assess your contributions as a teammate. To start, you can conduct a SWOT analysis of yourself as a teammate. SWOT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. You can take notes on each of these categories as I discuss them. Pause the video to give yourself some time to think this through. Starting with strengths, what are the skills, competencies, and experiences you bring to the team's effort? This analysis is for your own growth and development, so be honest in your self-reflection. You were placed on this team for a reason. You have something important to contribute to the overall effort, and it helps to recognize your strengths. Once you've listed your strengths, consider your weaknesses. What are the qualities or habits that don't help your team advance its mission? We all have weaknesses, so there's no shame in privately thinking through yours. An article in the Harvard Business Review found that leaders are typically aware of their strengths, but not nearly as perceptive of their weaknesses. We all have blind spots. Regularly seek feedback on what your weaknesses might be. Your weaknesses should be tied to some of the opportunities you'll identify to consider. Think about your personal OFIs, or Opportunities for Improvement. What do you need to learn or what skills can you develop to be a stronger contributor to your team? Finally, what threats exist for you as a teammate? When using a SWOT analysis for an individual contributor on a team, I think of threats as anything that can get in the way of you performing at an optimal level. An example might be not having as much time to work on a team assignment as you'd like. If you've been critical in conducting an individual SWOT analysis of yourself as a teammate, you can see what you're contributing to your team's effort. Are you happy with the results? If not, create an action plan for what you'll do to address your personal OFIs. As you develop in these areas, expect that you may make some mistakes along the way. Learn from them and then move on. Don't dwell on things you can't change. Use each lesson as a chance to grow into a better version of yourself and a better teammate. Store your personal SWOT analysis somewhere private. Refer back to it from time to time to see what's changed. If you have a trusted mentor or advisor, consider sharing your thoughts and get some additional feedback that you can include. Effective teammates are strategically self-aware. By being perceptive about your own strengths and weaknesses, you'll have more clarity about what you bring to your team.